Good afternoon. Welcome once again. I'll just check to make sure I'm connected properly. Yes, <laughs> just to be sure. Um, welcome to my daily chat. My name is Barry Selby. Before I jump into that, episode is number 587. I was going to try and put that first. Episode 587, the topic today is how do you get attracted in relationship? Is it chemistry? Is it looks? What's right? That's kind of the title and I'm still massaging it. Before I jump into the topic, let me just, just, just introduce myself properly this time. Hi, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help strong, successful, and high-achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion of the Divine Feminine, and that's what inspired these talks I've done for the last couple of years, called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And every day I do these talks, which is why we're at number 587 today. So 5 p.m. Pacific time is my usual start time. This is Facebook Live first. It does go onto YouTube later on, and I'll give you the, com the links to those at the back end. The topic today, and it's funny, I put the title together early today, and then had a conversation with a matchmaker that really <laughs> gave me pause for thought about this topic. So the topic is on the theme of what's the right way to be attracted, to meet somebody, to be connected to somebody in dating, excuse me, romance and relationship. Because there's a lot of, um, what's we're looking for? <laughs> there's a lot of advice out there. And I've had quite a lot of my own too. So I'm going to share both my perspective and my suggestions and see if they resonate for you. Um, now, as I said before, living in Los Angeles, we're very much in a visual aware society in this particular culture when it comes to attraction and looks. So we're very attracted to packaging, presentation, and a lot of people in this town work very hard on making sure their packaging, which means the skin they live in, is very attractive. For the men, it's the chiseled, it's the chiseled um, abs and, and, and the V-shaped v upper body torso. For women, it's, it's having sometimes a boob job, but certainly the flat stomach and all the other bits too. So there's a very much of an attachment in this town particularly, and other places too, where the packaging of how you look in a bikini or in swim swimsuit is the top priority. And it's interesting when you start saying, you know, how some people look, look good together. Yeah, on a magazine cover, maybe. In real life, maybe not so much. This, sorry, I'm, I just saw a fork in the road in my talk where I was going to go. So let me write that one at first, then come back to this one. Okay. So looks can be very deceptive in case you hadn't learned this one lesson yourself. There are people who look amazing, men and women, but when you get to know them, either they're, well, not either, there's several things. They might be an amazing person inside as well, but 90% of the time, people who are really attached to their looks haven't done the work on themselves where they're actually wanting someone you want to get to know. Maybe they're vacant, as in nobody home, or maybe they're so full of themselves from what they're doing that they have no room for anybody else. And there's a whole spectrum in between, so that's not the only choices. Okay, second, second preview, purview thought is chemistry. There's been this constant talk, and I actually have a chapter in my book about this. My book, by the way, is 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, available on Amazon. I'll put the link in the comments so you can find it on my website. I've got to plug my stuff. But chemistry is one of these challenging things because some people think it's like chemistry is great, but then it wears off, which it does if you don't know how to keep maintaining it. Chemistry is this wonderful thing that is... It's this intangible thing that when you meet somebody, you just feel this fire in your belly and this juice in your loins and the excitement of wanting to be together. And then you go, this is going to be exciting. And then six months later, if you're lucky, the, the chemistry is worn off and there's nothing left because the basis of the relationship is not fully expressed. And you're going to start seeing a theme here, by the way, because looks alone won't work because as people discover in Los Angeles particularly, you can only do so much plastic surgery. <laughs> it's looking good. So chemistry. Here's a little trick, by the way, a, a trick, a little solution, by the way. I, in my book, in, in 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, one of the chapters talks about chemistry, which is not the same as, as love or sex. Chemistry is one of these wonderful things that actually can be recharged. And I'll tell you how. <clears throat> For me, my, my belief about chemistry, which could be totally wrong, but I think it's right, is my belief about chemistry is it's the polarity between two um, or sorry, it's the, it's the attraction between two polarities, meaning somebody in the masculine and somebody in the feminine creates a polarity that really brings people together. And that fuels 
the chemistry. It's the attraction of the opposites that make it so sexy, which is why they say opposites attract. Well, I believe opposite polarities attract. You want to have common values, though, not opposite values. I'm getting ahead of myself. So chemistry is renewable because if you're finding yourself out of alignment with the chemistry's worn off, it's oftentimes because you've gotten lazy in your ownership of your particular polarity. And in general terms, men tend towards masculine polarity, women tend towards feminine polarity. And I'm being very general about that because it's not hard and fast rule. And for most people, the chemistry happens when each individual is at the, the highest level of that polarity within them. So a man and woman together in, in a relationship that's got a depleted chemistry will restore it when the man truly owns his masculine place and she owns a feminine place if that's the natural polarity. That extreme creates the chemistry that brings them together and that's the power of renewable chemistry. That's a, that's a teaching you can learn a lot from just from that alone. So I covered that one. So visual appearance, packaging and chemistry. That's two. Third one is common values. Some people look at relationship as being someone they can find a common path with, which is a wonderful place to play as well. The challenge with this, though, is that you can find someone who's got common values, but there's no romance there. You can be committed to the same path and be so, so on the same truth. And you might say, well, we should be together because we've got the same direction we're heading in, which is a, a great ideal. But for most people, that's not, not enough to sustain a relationship. It's an incomplete. And what I'm really realizing as I'm describing this is really it does include all of these a real authentic relationship is you want someone you're attracted to visually that you have chemistry and, and charge with and your values that you share with those are three things that i think personally together are a powerful way to attract a healthy relationship there's a fourth one out there that comes to me a second but let me go back for a second or let me do this for a second it's my, my broadcast i guess i can is that these three things the question becomes then so where do you start it depends i believe on where you're um, aligned with your, um, what's we're looking for? Um, mo your mode of mode of communication. I'll put it slightly that way. So, for example, if you're someone who is visually, and I talked about this yesterday, I think about visual, kinesthetic, and auditory communication. So you say things, listen to things, observe things through visual imagery, or you feel them. I was talking about that in the um, oh, some of my stuff in my yeah, okay get back on track so what resonates for you what lines up for you was whatever your primary mode of communication is so if you're a visual person that you look in pictures and you see things in imagery you're first of all going to know somebody by how they look duh <laughs> it's not rocket science it's straightforward on another level if you're someone who's very emotionally energetically or kinesthetically based so you feel things more than you see them in terms of how what connects to you the most deepest it will be the chemistry that turns you on more than the visual but again, as I said, it's for me the combination of those three, and there's a fourth one which I haven't got to yet, somewhere in there, hasn't come, it hasn't come through the surface yet. But those three plus the one are, I believe, the cornerstones for a healthy relationship, not one or the other, it's all of them. But it's the way in that you choose. And it's finding that common place to come in through, because the other ones can be um, discovered as you cl get closer. Because the thing about it is, you meet somebody, if you're a visual person, so is the other person, you're very attracted to how each other looks and you get really connected. But as time goes by, you drop into a deeper level of knowing each other. You start feeling each other. And that's where you start seeing the chemistry as well. Because visual, visual attraction can be chemistry-based to a degree, but it's the feeling level where the most potency is. And so it's dropping down the levels. Now, it helps if you already know this person and you have common values. And I mean common values meaning that you believe in similar things and you have a passion for similar things because that creates an alignment that can last for a lifetime. If you have opposing views, be it political, religious, non-religious, diet, food, planetary, whatever that is, and you have opposite views, you may have a great sexual chemistry for a while, but at some point in time your values are going to pull you apart because they just don't line up. But it's finding parallel and not the same necessarily, but parallel values that really undergirds the strength of relationship. So you have common values that are overlapping enough that you feel commonality to start with. On top of that is the chemistry that you can renew. And on top of that is the visual attraction that started things in the first place. Now, this is the beginning, by the way. This is not sustaining. I'm just giving you the upfronts. So that, that's, that's a television term. I didn't know I had that one in my head, but that was come through. But it's what you do up front to build this relationship. Now, I had a conversation with a matchmaker today. That wasn't the most uplifting conversation I've ever had. Um, 
because I I got um, <laughs> I was going to say accused. That's not accurate though. But I got feedback that didn't feel true to me about how I was when I met this date that I went on um, before Christmas. Before Christmas. And I don't actually believe that what I was told was accurate. But I had to sit with it for a moment. And I was actually doing a little bit of a... T I, I almost went into a little bit of a tailspin because I was going, that's not true. No, 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 no. I was, I was going through the circle of my own stuck my own head because I didn't believe this. But I sat with, okay, so what if this was true? What if I was absolutely not my true self when I was out on this date? If that's the case, I've got some adjusting to do. That, that's pure and simple. But that's not bad. That's just simply reminding myself. But the second part is, I was also reviewing in my head the date I went on. It was a coffee date during the day, nice to get together, somebody I'd already met once. And the feedback from the matchmaker was, how could you say no if there was no chemistry? And my answer was, very easily. <laughs> to be blunt. Because there wasn't any. I mean, yes, there's common values, which is great. We haven't both English, which is great. But energetically, we don't play in the same arena. And that's a key for me. So, actually, that may... That may be the fourth one. Energetic play, energetic arenas. I'll, I'll explore that one as we go. You know, she's pleasant looking. She's not someone I go, wow, I want to be with her. And there was no chemistry whatsoever. And common values, maybe. We have some, in the field as, fields I play in, to be totally transparent, I hang a lot of conscious spiritual people. So I'm around, well, on a, on a given Sunday, um, several hundred people I have conversations with who have common spiritual values with me. Doesn't mean I want to date any of them. <laughs> so that piece alone does not guarantee there's actual romance there. But the feeling I got from this matchmaker was somehow I had screwed up a chance to have an amazing relationship. That's the way it felt. Now, what was actually said may not be exactly that. That's the way I felt it. But what I realized for myself, and I own this clearly, was there was room for me to be room for me to improve. Because as much as I teach this stuff and I'm, I'm an expert by having written a book, actually your second book and a few other things too and doing all these Facebook lives for the last two years I know some stuff it doesn't always mean I practice what I preach accurately I do practice what I preach the best I can but I also forget and make mistakes human just to be transparent here so in this context I'm looking at do I take their advice and ignore what I feel and the answer to that is no um, do I believe what they said and review what happened for myself and see if there's anything I missed on it the answer is yes because the thing is there's always opportunities to learn this is another thing by the way as a, as a PS that's not on this subject but some are related if you go out on dates and they don't work out what can you learn from them if you go out in relationship um, explorations you go on romantic dates you go on dating sites and meet somebody go out socially do you um, do you take feedback and do you learn from them yourself that this is a total. This is this is a a, um, a bonus. <laughs> it's not part of the main topic, but this is the thing too, because in a way, if you go on dates and meet somebody and you're attracted to them visually and the feeling level of chemistry, is that enough? And if it doesn't work out, are you willing to step back and go, okay, so what didn't work for me? What didn't I do, or what could I have done, or what didn't, what should I have done? All these different questions. Be willing to face those, because so many people I know also go on dates cyclically as they go on a date with somebody it doesn't work out. They don't learn anything from, the, from that date. They don't take any information from that date. They just go on another date and go, let's try another one. I don't care. Because they're not willing to grow and learn. And that is a trademark of somebody I wouldn't want to be with. <laughs> because if you don't learn from experiences, there's no growth. And if you're not growing, as one of the teachers I know said, if you're not growing, you're dying. Meaning that if you're not explaining and exploring and becoming more aware of what's happening in your life and who you are, you're contracting and you're limiting. You're basically fading out of existence. So... One reason I do these talks every day is selfish. I do these for me to remember. So this is, I appreciate you witnessing this <laughs> and watching. I hope you get value from it too. But I'm doing this for myself really as well because I want to make sure I stay on track with my message but also to reflect on myself to know one, that I, what I'm talking about makes sense but two, can I learn from myself? What can I take back in? I've been fighting for myself and this is the, to be totally transparent. If you've been watching my broadcast this last week, I've been promoting my Rocket 2019 workbook, playbook. I got it both, workbook and playbook. It's seven modules to help you create the life you want. And it'll set you up, you're up for success. And it's, it's better than resolutions. It's, better than it's more than intentions. It's a lot of stuff in there. Seven powerful keys. I have been fighting it myself. I've been talking about in here that I should dig it out and do it myself this year. I haven't done this yet. 
and it's already the ninth, ninth, uh, yes, ninth. Sorry, I've looked at the clock. Ninth of January. So I haven't actually taken upon myself to do the workbook. So my declaration here in front of everybody watching is that I'm going to go through the workbook myself because I need to for myself because I want to set my year for success and I wouldn't invite you to do it if I didn't do it myself and that would be totally hypocritical. So I'm out of myself saying I didn't do it, but it's the 9th of January, it's not too late, <laughs> not too late for you either. And I'm going to take the book out. Now I have, a, I have an advantage, I have it on my computer, I can actually go work on it now. You'd have to go buy it and download it yourself to do it as well. So check it out and I'll put the link in the comments for that as well. Um, I think that's basically it. It's food for thought. I wanted to put this out there as some ideas, suggestions, because of one, because of the conversation I had today, and two, because the topic was on my mind about what attracts us, what is right. And the reality is there is no necessary right answer, except that I believe it's more than one of those choices. If you just join somebody visually, it's not enough. If you join somebody chemistry, it's not enough. If you join somebody for common values, that isn't enough either. There's more to it. And also, um, what's the first one? The fourth one is about in the same playing area, playground, playing the same energy fields, which is another piece of the puzzle, which is about consciousness, spirituality, other stuff. If that isn't in there, it's not enough. Or if that is in there, it's not enough. So it's kind of like you really want to build a complete composite of all these different things to have a healthy relationship and start where you are. Because as I said, also, there's no right place to start either. It's like, where do you start, where do you begin, and then explore the other areas and see if it all fits together. So I'm offering you four ideas of what are sparks for a good relationship. If you've got other ideas as well, please put them in the comments below. And if you have questions about this, please put them in the comments and I'll respond when I sign off. Again, Facebook Live first, then on YouTube and I'll give you the links. So you can watch these afterwards. And I will put the links in the comments for my book and for the Rock Your 2019 workbook because they'll both help you. I did mention them several times in this broadcast. <laughs> so replays on Facebook. This is on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. Please uh, hit the notify button wherever there's a button around this to be notified next time I go live. I think there's one around this broadcast somewhere. Um, I do go live at 5 p.m. Pacific time pretty much every day. Once in a while I move it, but it's usually here this time. And you watch the replays anytime you want. Um, I save this on my business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. That's where all of these live, more easily to find than on my personal page, because I do other things on my personal page besides Facebook Live. Uh, my YouTube channel is also Barry Selby. All my social media is my name, which is Barry Selby. On YouTube, you can find my playlist there called Messages from the Masculine. Oh, please, subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the playlist on uh, YouTube, it's called Messages from the Masculine. We find all of these listed in reverse order. And finally, my podcast I've launched, which has got basically more and more of these are putting over there. There's only about 40 out of the 580 plus, so they've got a ways to go. But I have a podcast called Messages from the Masculine on iTunes. You can subscribe to that and download the audio version so you can listen to them when you want. With that, I thank you for watching. Consider what I said and see if these reach, see which one of these four, if any of them, or if all of them, speak to you about relationships. I'd love to hear from you and I hope this has been making some sense to you. So from, from me to you, I wish you a year of great success in love and relationships and every area. Um, and always put yourself first. Take care of yourself before you take care of others. It's a foundational rule that I keep learning again and again and again. So thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. And uh, take care of yourselves. Bye. You're welcome, Lisa. Take care of yourself. Bye.